CataractCoach.com. Developmental cataract technique. What's your approach to this unusual cataract in a young patient? Let's watch together. So developmental cataract in a 14-year-old boy. So there's the main incision being done. I like how the limbal vessels were barely cut. That's going to help the seal up beautifully in the long-term period. Now, tripan blue dye going is going to help with visualization, but also it makes the caps a little bit less elastic. And that's helpful in a case like this, where a 14-year-old boy, you're expecting the caps to be very elastic. And that can mean less control as you make the rexes. So putting a tripan blue dye is, is an important move there. Now, here's... One paracentesis, here's another, so probably a bimanual irrigation aspiration coming up. Let's take a look, more viscoelastic. Let's see the rexus. Let's get to it. Show me. Now, sometimes the cystome is helpful in these eyes, but here just with the forceps, so poking in here. Now, the nice part of that developmental cataract is you can just trace the edge of it and get pretty much a 5 millimeter rex. That looks about 5 millimeter in diameter, and you'll get a beautifully round rexus. Now, key question here is what was this cataract like? A year ago, five years ago, ten years ago, when the baby was born, what was the cataract like? Now, if it was a minimal cataract and then recently got worse, that's going to make life a lot easier for us. Now, if you're a young surgeon trying to learn all this stuff, cataractcoach.com is for you. It's a fantastic website. It's totally free. Free book about how to learn cataract surgery. Free 25-part curriculum series. Free series on how to do lens calculations. Free series on how to set up your FACO machine. Choose the right FACO settings for fluidics and power. It's all there. It's all free. Now, you want to get this nucleus out of the bag. This thing is butter soft. You do not need any ultrasonic power to remove this cataract. Vacuum only. In fact, I could even do the whole thing with the IA probe. I wouldn't even use the FACO probe. But doing the FACO probe is fine if you've got good control. If you inadvertently give a little FACO energy, zzz, it'll go right through the capsule. It'll go right through the nucleus and pow, right through the capsule. You don't want that. So taking out the cataract very easily. Beautiful control here by our surgeon. Fantastic job. And now let's clean this up. So time for some cortex removal. Now saying if this patient had a reasonably clear visual axis, then there probably wasn't much developmental amblyopia. However, this patient had a blurred or obscured or blocked visual axis since birth, there's going to be some dense or profound amblyopia. And that's going to limit the post-op vision. Now, I don't have any history here, so I'm not quite sure. But in a case like this, even then, I'd still tell you, for this patient, this unilateral cataract like this, you're best off putting in a monofocal lens. I'd put a monofocal lens and essentially aim for plano, which would be great if the patient had some growth in the axial length and therefore became a little myopic later in life. That's okay. A little myopia is a gift. If the myopia is too much to tolerate compared to the other eye, you can always do care refractor procedures such as LASIK or PRK for this patient. I think LASIK would be great if needed in the future. Now, cleaning up here. These lens epithelial cells in a young person are pretty aggressive, so you want to clean up as much as you can. So bimanual irrigation aspiration. Really want to clean all that up. Polish the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim. Nicely done here. Beautiful. Switching hands to get full 360 access. And then going to be putting in a monofocal lens, I'm assuming. And so here, switching hands, you get good access. Now, are you doing these under general anesthesia? Maybe for a 14-year-old, but you probably could also do them under pretty good sedation if you had an anesthesiologist who was willing to give significant sedation. I think 14 is kind of the gray zone. You've got to determine patient by patient what you can get away with. And when in doubt, just do the general anesthesia. These are young, healthy people, and they'll do fine. There's the visclass going inside the eye. Beautiful looking rexus. Beautiful. Let's see the lens going in. Probably, let me guess, single piece of acrylic. That's probably the, the common choice here. There we go, nice and easy going in, single piece of acrylic lens going in the bag. Very nicely done. Now, what do you think about the choice of a slightly yellow tinted lens or a blue blocker lens versus a totally clear lens? Please leave a comment below. So this young person, the other lens, let's, say, let's assume the other eye has a perfectly healthy 14-year-old human lens. What would you do here? And there's no right or wrong answer. I just want your opinion here. Sealing up the incisions here at the end, would you put a suture in? Could you put a suture in this eye just because, you know, 14-year-old kid may rub the eye, may not be as compliant. Could you do something here? Maybe. But here at the end, cleaning out the viscoelastic, that looks pretty good. Nicely done. And then going behind the lens even, remove that, flush it on out. That looks beautiful. Patient's going to have a nice outcome here. So these are tough cases, interesting choices. You got to figure out what you're going to do here. And again, the history matters. Does this patient have any significant amblyopia? And even if there is some amblyopia, at least clearing the visual axis is going to let better focus light in. So you may have limitation of the vision based on that amblyopia. But hopefully this patient had 
many years earlier in life where there was a good, clear visual access and the cataract wasn't nearly as bad. And as a result, this patient could have a beautiful recovery of great vision from this beautiful surgery. So nicely done here. I do appreciate it. Remember, if you're a young ophthalmologist in training, I got so much good material for you. The top podcast in all of ophthalmology will teach you the secrets to success. Check it out everywhere.